Eastern Bloc countries, they have students as old as Rodney Dangerfield. And I'm telling you, it's tough to win over there. <laughs> More ways than one. Of course, their primary subject is volleyball, and that'll be our subject for the next, well, however long it takes. There's no clock on volleyball. The East opening this last game of the gold medal match and losing the side out to the south and trying to regain it and doing just that is Heather Reka out of Lake in the Hills, Illinois plays her college volleyball at Illinois State. Another big outside hitter. The United States is full of them. She can bomb on the outside. Only 19. The 20-year-old age limit in effect for volleyball here at the U.S. Olympic Festival. Tricia Bowen with the soft shot over the net. And getting caught at the net. And it is a point for the East. And they take the lead here in the fifth game. One to nothing. And serving will be Beverly Oden. As more perspiration has to be wiped up off the floor. Oh, okay. And there you take a look at the tension on the face of Kathy DeBoer, the head coach of the East Squad from the University of Kentucky. Juanita Norfleet. And it is, she just hits it off the blocker. Unbelievable. And if you if you can see this in the background, one of the ball girls in red almost gets a face. Watch your knee. She hits it off. Watch the girl in red. She blasts, and it almost ricochets and knocks one of the ball girls out. You've got to be careful when the is spiking. You sure do. <laughs> Meanwhile, Heather Reka sends a rocket over the net. It goes off. One of the green-shirted Southern defenders, and it's a side out for the East. Well, there's a lot of pressure on the coaches like to come ball. here. Down ball. Now to win, to do well, they get recognition also. They're here just like the athletes trying to move up, perhaps into Olympic coaching or to get a better college coaching job, and they want to win very, very badly. Nice serve by Laura Asper. Jill Johnson tried to get down there to make the good dig, but couldn't quite make it, and it is 2 nothing the East on top. Over the net it goes, but it'll be a point for the East. Ball just out of bounds on the little dump shot, the left-handed. And so the East getting off to a quick start. Asper continues to serve. It is 3-0. Every point, the gold medal comes closer. And Lonise Norfleet, oh, fakes the, the spike and just pushes a dink over the net. Bev Oden was there initially, but the South ends up with the uh, side out as Virginia Stair puts it in. Pretty nice up by Bev Oden in the backcourt. It's very difficult not to get dug in. You wonder how you dig in in the floor while Lonise is coming at you. Virginia Stair, she will lead Terry Pettit's team right, at watch, Nebraska. Watch for the X. Watch the X. Okay, the X is just a crossing pattern. One woman will come in, hit the quick set, and the other woman coming right behind. But passes shanks, so no play developed. Free ball. And Lonise Northlade has it go off her fingertips. One of the rare mistakes she's made in this match. She is allowed to make one mistake a night. <laughs> and the East hopes that she'll go over her quota. <laughs> uh, as we've talked about, the momentum can shift. Yeah. She's in a groove right now, and there's another bad pass. Two players bumping into each other. Adier Pelding and Lanise Norfleet. This is the old husband and wife team, although they're two women. They just bump into each other. I got it, you take it. And uh, two players covering the court. Let's see who they go. Oh, another ace. Great serving by Ur Pelding. Now the spin that time could have had something to do with it. Adier Pelding has it go off her arms and a nice serve by Heather Reka and the East is on a roll. They lead the fifth and deciding game. Five to nothing. We'll be back. We'll be back. Aggressive to the ball. Call it. Call it. Some, some, summertime, serving up summertime. We're serving up a hot time summer at McDonald's with some sizzle on a sesame seed bun. Some, summertime, serving up a fast time on the go summer, diving in, soaking up some fun. Some, some summertime, serving up summertime. Some, some, summertime, serving up summertime. Some, some, summertime, serving up summertime. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Serving up summertime. The awakening of an athlete begins with the thrill of the challenge. But to meet that challenge, the United States Olympic Committee needs your support. Because with your support, the U.S. Olympic Committee can work every day to help young athletes make their challenge our victory. Hi, I'm George Miller. Our athletes really need your help. Please send your contributions to Colorado Springs, Colorado.
page two is brought to you by Bartles and James Premium Wine Cooler Company. The real value of an athlete in water polo is often determined right here at the scorer's table. And if statistics speak for themselves, Alex Rousseau is the leader, not only in goals scored, but also in assists. He leads the nearest challenger by over five goals, even before the start of the gold medal game. And that has a lot of coaches sitting up and taking notice. What uh, we try to look at is to see how much the player can grow in his own position. Does he have the mental ability to be able to play internationally? Is he mentally tough? Uh, those are the things we would be looking at to further develop on the player. Alex, first of all, has, is blessed with natural talent. He is big, about 6'5", about 205 pounds. He is fast. He's about a 4,700-yard sprinter. And uh, so he has natural talent. The other things that uh, Alex is blessed with is that he does like to work hard. And uh, he does have other talents like shooting from the outside. He's able to play defense. He is a good team player. Uh, he still has to improve his defensive play all around quite a lot to make an Olympic team, but he's on the way to do that. In water polo, the six offensive players usually set up from two to four meters away from the goal, with the whole man trying to gain position in front of the cage. Now, it's illegal to get any closer without the ball, but the defense is always trying to push the other player further out. Now, as you can see, the two-meter position is like a scrimmage line in football, where the big men get in the trenches and often struggle continually to enhance the chance of a score. Now, if Alex needs a break, he'll rotate to an outside driver's position where his left-handed shots and accurate delivery can score from out here at 15 to 20 feet. This makes him doubly dangerous, inside and out. Recent rule changes make the whole position more critical. The officials now allow the whole man to take more abuse in his attempt to get off a shot on goal. Rousseau's even temperament makes him play the ball and not the man. The water polo rules really help me a lot because of the whole forward gets to go for the shot a little more. They, they really, instead of just calling the quick foul as the ball comes in, they're, they're really making the guy have to foul the shooter, the whole forward. So if a guy's not going to foul me, that's why I got a lot of shots off. They're not fouling me that hard, so I'm, I'm still getting a hand on the ball, and I'm turning them, and I'm shooting well. And then when I do get the foul, it's easy for me to pass it out because they can't gross me too much. So it has helped the whole forwards. They, it's a good, good changes for me. I just get, get even, I guess. You don't get mad, get even. So I just... A guy like pushes off me or grosses me and I lose the ball in the hole, I'm just gonna get mad and next time he's not, I'm gonna score on him. I just think that way. Alex Russo, by the way, is a French Canadian and apparently he's as adept on the frozen kind of water as he is on the wet stuff that we just saw him in. He did score two goals in that gold medal game to lead the South over the West. And I don't know about you, Jim, but the few times that I have really watched water polo, I'm just always amazingly impressed by the endurance of these athletes. I mean, you're either swimming or treading water, and that's it. All that happened with Alex was the ice melted. He was still in the pond, <laughs> and he right. adapted and played water polo. No question about it. Endurance is certainly the key to water polo. I mean, imagine playing soccer in the water and never, ever being able to rest going end to end. Interesting, though, they do have a 35-second clock, Gail, just like mm -hmm. in basketball, in which to get a shot off. The U.S. history in water polo, not very successful in early years. You might remember back in Montreal in 76, they didn't even qualify the U.S. team for the Olympic Games up in Montreal. Then in 1980, they had built a rather strong national team that had high hopes for medals, but because of the Moscow boycott, obviously were not able to attend by 84, the silver medal. So it's a program definitely on the rise. Well, looking down below, the rhythmic gymnasts are getting ready to march on into music. They'll be performing shortly, as will the men's all-round team title, that gold medal to be decided. Still to come, the men's gold medal in volleyball, and we'll be going back to women's volleyball. So stay with us. Southern California, many people return to nature to find relief from the chaos and pressure of contemporary urban life. And if you are planning this as well, we wanted to remind you that Ed's new Bartles and James premium red wine cooler can contribute greatly to the relaxing and tranquil atmosphere of the great outdoors. So if the unspoiled wilderness is in your plans this summer, be sure to take along plenty of Bartles and James. Believe me, you will be glad you did. Thanks for your support. According to the book, we got three minutes. Tonight, we're gonna beat the book. Let's move out. 
In today's field artillery, the emphasis is on training and motivation, because a high-tech system like this Army rocket launcher is only as good as the people who run it. We're here. All that you can be. Arm rockets, fire. Did we beat the book, Sergeant? We rewrote the book. Find your future in the Army. Friday, there's high-pressure action on the ESPN. It's called a survival tie. You'll feel the tension when the United States battles West Germany in a high-stakes Davis Cup showdown. And Player of the Year honors are on the line at the U.S. Women's Open. See all the second-round heroics live. After Sports Center, America's finest amateur athletes go for the gold at the U.S. Olympic Festival. It's all live Friday on ESPN. And we, of course, re-emphasize the importance of that Davis Cup play. The United States, West Germany, the loser is out of competition for next year and would then have to go on and re-qualify. And the re-qualification process is a long and arduous one uh, against a lot of South American countries. So a difficult task and a very important match in Davis Cup. We're going to go back to that gold medal volleyball game now. Tom Mees and Chris Marlowe, we are late in the fifth and deciding game for the gold medal. Ready to resume action after a brief timeout. The South leading the East by a score of 9 to 7 after trailing Chris by a score of 5 to nothing. And the East calling that timeout, I think, basically just to try and stop the tide a little bit. Well, one of the things that happened was the, that facial administer really got the South going. They all got jacked up over that, and now they're really playing well. So it's anybody's ball game right now. And East Norfleet serves at the net. This is Ramirez, but Norfleet comes up to dig it out. Bev Oden tries in vain and goes off Ramirez, and the South is on a roll, leading 10-7. And doing it the front line, Neil Johnson. Yep. South five points away from the gold medal. Look at that total. 24 kills. If you don't know what a kill is, it's what Bonice Norfleet does best. She is lethal. And a kill is just a spike that goes down, and she's whipping them down from every angle tonight. What an athlete. Two hits at the net that time by Jeanette Bennett. What makes it so impressive, we talk about basketball, we've seen in the Olympic Festival coverage, J.R. Reed. Uh, how, what an impact player he's been for North Carolina, and Terry Mills. Lanise Norfleet is just like that in basketball terms. She is a Kareem, she is a J.R. Reed, a Bill Walton, those kinds of players. I mean, she, she doesn't come along very often. Number seven, Tracy Kisswell has come in for the East, replacing number two, Chris Lall. 11 to seven, the South four points away from the gold medal, but it's easier said than done. The East still has to stop the tide. Kisswell gets it over the net in good shape, and now the East will set up for the spike. There it is. Dug out very well on the back line by Bowen. Keep it in play. Bill Johnson gets it over. Bill Johnson again. With a good block there as Calab Redding was Jeanette Bennett and Tracy Kisswell. And what happens here, the East needs to score as many points as they can while Lanise is in the backcourt. The ball just rejected. They still want it. Number six, Zanet Bennett, the Notre Damer, blocking at the net. That's where the East has to score their points. They have a fairly tall team, not a great defensive team. They have to stuff the ball at the net. Heather Reka will serve. Again, it was Jill Johnson, but the ball is kept alive. Tracy Kisrow was blocked at the net. And out of bounds it goes. It'll go to the south on the side out. Well, any momentum that the East may have gotten or taken away with that side out has now vanished because they didn't build on it. Nice block at the net by the south. Again, it is Amy Hayes. And out of bounds goes Virginia Stair, so it'll be side out east and another chance to climb back in. Interesting. Number six, Zanet Bennett, as Scott Luster looks on. Zanet Bennett comes from the same hometown, the same place that one of the great volleyball players of all time, Rita Crockett, the star of the USA right, back, Olympic team, from the same hometown. Yeah. If she can be three-quarters of the player of Rita Crockett. She will have a tremendous career. That is certainly true. Rita Crockett, one of the real legends of this sport. The set. He's trying to come back. And it'll be a point for the East. The crowd 
seems to be behind the East now as they are three points down to the South. That's unusual. The crowd is great. They cheer anybody who's losing. This one, can she serve any tougher than that? She likes that. The coach likes that. Kathy DeBoer commenting on the serve. Nice reaction, but it doesn't work out in the East. As another point, and it's 11 to 9. Remember, you have to win by two. The taller you are, the better blocker you can be. A beautiful block, Bev Odin and number seven, Kisro, getting way over the net. Another one by Virginia Stair, and it works the second time. She got her hand way over that, but that's okay. She didn't touch it. Big difference now. Can the East get back into it before Lanise comes to the front line? Because when Lanise gets up there, she's going to start hammering. She's in the left back. If you're not familiar with volleyball, they rotate clockwise in a circle, all positions. You don't stay in the same position. When the East gets up there, it could be... Good night. Yeah, for the East. So they have to score some points right now. Bev Olden will take a swing at that one, Beth. And the South racks up another point, and that's a bonus. Heidi Pelding knocking it off the defender and out of bounds. It is 12-9, the South. And Virginia Stair will serve again. Tension building is... Both sides striving for the gold medal here at the U.S. Olympic Festival. Good set. Great set. And it's in the corner. Yep. Jill Johnson. She's really been sort of an unsung hero for this team. She certainly has. But give a lot of credit to the center. Watch this set come up. Perfect out to the outside. And Johnson cranking it down the line. So it is 13 to 9. The South and there's a timeout. Listen, oh, I will stay there. I want you to Carmichael commit. Carmichael Auditorium. We'll be back okay. with a conclusion in a moment. She's going to commit on Owen in the middle. So you got to stay with your hit over here. She's going one on one with her. No sport has changed more over the past few years than tennis. It's more colorful, competitive, and controversial than ever. Tennis Magazine delivers all the action the conflicts, the stars, the big matches, the new equipment, and the tips that can improve your game. Get a year of tennis for only $9.97, less than half the newsstand price. Call 800-228-2210. You'll also get our free booklet with tips to improve your game. Call 800-228-2210. <laughs> you guys and gals out there, you can still celebrate during the Subaru Value Celebration with cool cash back up to $4,000. Or get factory-supported 3.9% financing on all 87 Subarus, even four-wheel drives. You heard me, baby. 3.9% or up to $4,000 cash back from Subaru and Bill Crouch Subaru in Boulder. Back at Carmichael Auditorium, the tension is building. This is the gold medal game of the gold medal match of the women's volleyball competition at the U.S. Welcome back to Carmichael Auditorium. This is the fifth and decisive game of the gold medal match between the East and the South of the women's volleyball competition the U.S. Olympic Festival on ESPN. I'm Tom Mees along with Chris Marlowe. Hope you're enjoying the action tonight. The South. Inching ever closer, only two points away from the gold medal. And the East, though, taking some momentum away, winning the side out at the net. It certainly helps. Tough serving. I always say that the serve is the least practiced art in volleyball. It's easiest to learn spiking, but the serve, no one practices it. If you can serve tough, you can score points. Again, it is Jill Johnson with a hard spike attempt, but it was blocked at the net, and eventually Johnson knocks it out of bounds. The East gets a point. And people might wonder, where is Lanise? She's in the backcourt. One more side out. If the South gets the ball, Lanise will come into the front line. So the East needs to score. They need to get the 13. They need to get some points. Excellent observation, Chris. The East has to make hay while the sun is shining. Exactly there. right. And quick hay. That's right. And they're doing it. They sure are. That was Amy Hayes out of Anaheim, California. She plays collegiately at Stanford, and the crowd is getting into it now. Really getting into it. I'll tell you something. When you're a hitter, the way Lanise is, she's dying to get in that front row. You can't spike in the front row unless you're a front row player. You can spike behind the white 10-foot line. They could set Lanise in the backcourt, but they probably will not. That's a very advanced play for younger players. They need to side out. I mean the South. They want to get their big... Oh! 
There it is. Tracy Kisrow's serve is out of bounds. Remember that. Really let them off the hook. Let the South off the hook. And here she comes. Look out, baby. <laughs> Jill Johnson will serve. But look out for Louise. We'll see what happens. Oh, shouldn't have hit that ball over. Huh? Should have set it up. Great. He's doing a great job at the moment. No. Still blocking. And it'll be a point for the South. A net call against the East. And although Lanise didn't block it, that's one of the bigger blocks you'll find anywhere in the world with Northfleet and Bowen 6-2-6-4. Intimidation. Here we go. This is the gold medal point for the South. All they need is one more point, and that is it. The block is made. The South has won the gold medal. Trisha Bowen with the decisive block at the net. And Lanise Norfleet, well, she was in the front row, but she wasn't needed. As the South wins the fifth and decisive game, 15 to 11, wins the gold medal, three games to two. Dejection. The East representatives. The other side, unbridled joys. The two sides shake hands. Let's take a look at the what proved to be the final point of the women's competition. Well, you know, you mentioned Tom that Lanise really didn't do anything. Well, it's tough to hit the ball when she's up there. She's not here on this particular play. The ball just ricochets into the net, but tough to get the ball down. And the happy reaction. At first, uh, look, it looked like Trisha Bowen blocked that ball, but Amy Hayes actually hit it into the net. And look at that, Trisha Bowen and Lanise Norfleet hugging. Isn't that what it's all about? Usually the first inner in competition, the first win they probably had in that kind of competition. So that wraps up our coverage of the women's gold medal game, but still to come later tonight on ESPN, it's the men's gold medal game. We'll be back with that a little bit later on.